Welcome to the fourth part of Rock Coder's Space Invaders tutorial. Up until now, we've created a simple game with one Space Invader that moves to the bottom of the screen or can be shot. In this tutorial, we're now going to update 40 invaders at a time so we have a full wave of invaders on the screen. We're going to do that using clones and lists. So, in the invader sprite, let's start off by creating a new custom block called Create Invaders. I'm going to run this without screen refresh as it needs to run fast. What this will do is it will populate lists for the X and Y coordinates of each and every invader. So let's create those lists. Invader X for all sprites. Invader Y for all sprites and invader state for all sprites. For each sprite we're going to need to know its x and y coordinates and we need to know its state whether it's active, exploding or idle. So let's set up these variables. We will use an x and a y coordinate variable to do this. Start off with y at 128, which is towards the top of the screen. We're going to create five rows of invaders. So repeat five times. Each row is going to start at the left hand side of the screen. So set x to minus 220. Each row will contain eight, alien, eight invaders. So we can start adding the coordinates to the lists. Add the x coordinate to invader x. Add the y coordinate to invader y. And add active to invader state. Now we'll change the x-coordinate by 40 so that each invader in this row of 8 appears to the right of the previous one. And when we finish that row, we will change the y-coordinate by minus 32 so the next row appears below the previous row. Also, we'll make sure the lists are empty at the beginning of this function. So we'll delete all of invader x, delete all of invader y, and delete all of invader state at the beginning there. Further to this, we want to actually create a clone of this sprite for each position, which we can do simply by creating a clone of myself there. The way this will work is that we already have the positions of each of the 40 invaders in the list. So each clone will have a unique identifier number. The first clone will be number one, the second clone will be number two, the third clone number three, and so on. The position of the first clone will be item one of invader X and item one of invader Y. The position of the second clone will be item two of invader X and item two of invader Y, and so on. So each clone correlates to an entry in the lists. So we need to set a unique clone index for each clone. The beginning will set clone index to one for the first clone. And then after the clone's been created, we'll update it so that when the second clone is created, it will be two, third clone three, and so on and so forth. We're going to create, call the create invaders block from initialize game. We also need to know which sprite is the original master sprite and which sprites are the clones. A nice way of doing that is to make a variable called clone type. Now when the green flag is pressed, we know at this point the project has just started, there are no clones, and so we can set 
the clone type to master, master sprite. Whenever we create a clone, it runs when I start as a clone. Whenever it runs when I start as a clone, we can set the clone type to invader. So we now know which are the clones and which is the original master sprite. Let's update the update invaders function. We no longer need that to run all of this code. We only want the update invaders function to run for the master sprite. When the message is sent, it's received by the master sprite and all of the clones. But we only want to update the lists once. And so we'll use the master sprite to do this. If the clone type is the master, then we don't want to show the master. We'll use this code in there and we'll use this here. So if it's the master clone, we'll use a timing code to move the invaders and then we'll display the invaders. Now I'm not going to do the move invaders code until the next tutorial, so we'll change this to update the counter by zero so this code never actually runs. So all that's happening in here is it's displaying the invaders each time. Also, because we're in the master sprite, if we call the custom block to display invaders, it will just be called for the master sprite. We actually want to display the clones. So instead of using that, we will add a broadcast at this point. To make it clear what it's doing, we'll call the broadcast display invader clones. Over here, what was display invaders will now be when I receive display invader clones and we only want this code to run for the clones and not for the master sprite. So we'll add a check. If the clone type is an invader, we'll display it. And the code will be slightly different because we're no longer using the state variable. We're now checking the list. So what we actually want to check is the item for this particular clone, which is clone index. of invader state. So if this particular clone is active, then great, show its costume. If it's exploding, then great, show its costume. But we don't set the state, we update the state in the list. So we replace item clone index of invader state with idle. We don't need to hide the ver hide this, the clone anymore. We can simply delete the clone. We don't want to set game over because we don't want the game over game to be over whenever any single invader has exploded. It only happens after all of the invaders have exploded. So we need to add an invader counter for this. We'll do it in create invaders. We'll have a variable called invader count for all sprites. So I start it with a capital I. And after I've created the 40 clones, I will set the invader count to 40. I need to make my code easier to read. I'm going to create a new variable called all invader count. It's going to be for all sprites, it's all in capitals because this is a constant value. This variable will be set once and it will never change. I'm going to set it right at the beginning to 40. The number of invaders in any wave. And instead of setting invader count to 40, I'll set it to all invader count, which makes the code a lot easier to read. Now, Whenever I've deleted a clone, 
I can change my invade account by minus one. Also in display invader clones, I need to make sure the clone is visible. So now over in update invaders, I can add code to check if all the invaders have been destroyed. If the invader count is zero, then they've all been destroyed and I can set the game over to true. And I'll put that beginning there. The final bit of code I'll update for this is the check collisions. Now I only want to check the collisions for the clones, I don't want to check for the master sprites, so again I'll add a conditional here, if, and I'll borrow it from there, duplicate that. If it's a clone, and I also want it to be an active clone because I don't want to check explosions for touching missiles, so I'll say if item clone index of invader state is active and I'm touching the missile then I need to update his state so again that's updating the element in the list item clone index of invader state with exploding Then I can remove the set state. So I've initialized game calls create invaders, create invaders creates all the lists and also creates the clones. Update invaders won't move anything at the moment, but if I've killed all the invaders, the game will be over and it will display the clones. Um, the clones are displayed over here. So if I now run this code, after removing all the variables from the screen and the lists, press space, one invader is showing up. Ah, I need to set the position of each clone. So I show it, but I also need to set the position from the list. So it's set to clone item clone index of invader x and in my item clone index of invader y. And there we have a full set of invaders which can be shot. Explosions are very slow at the moment, that's because in the previous example I left the explosion counter check for 30, which is one entire second. I'll change that to six, and that's much more realistic. Let's see what happens when I clear the wave, which isn't particularly challenging. Six to go, four to go, and cleared the wave, and it's acknowledged that and said game over. So we now have a full fleet of aliens. In the next tutorial, we'll start them moving down the screen.